We, the jury in the above entitled action, find the defendant or Orenthal James Simpson not guilty of the crime of murder in violation of Penal Code Section 187A, a felony upon Nicole Brown Simpson, a human being, as charged in count one of the information. Who could forget that moment where you were when O.J. Simpson was acquitted of the murder of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ron Goldman? The families of the victims, much of the nation, and a civil court would later maintain that O.J. was, in fact, the killer all along. But the only thing that matters in terms of one's freedom is what happens in the criminal court. Now, however, more than 15 years later, a new documentary claims that the couple may actually have died at the hands of a serial killer. Trace Gallagher explains. Trace? That convicted killer, Megan, is a man named Glenn Rogers. He's on death row in Florida for two murders, one in Tampa, Florida, and one in Los Angeles here in 1995. He's suspected as many as 10 other murders and claims he may have killed as many as 70 people. Now, the Discovery Channel investigation didn't talk with Glenn Rogers, but I want you to listen to Rogers in a 1995 radio interview talking about Nicole Brown Simpson's home. Listen. I was working in Los Angeles at the time, and I, I was working on the houses next door to hers and uh, actually went through her house doing an estimate with the company that I was working for. And in fact, Rogers has apparently produced receipts that prove that he was, in fact, working as a painter here in West Los Angeles in 1994. Rogers claims that O.J. paid him to break into Nicole Brown's home and steal her diamond earrings and then, quote, kill her if necessary. A criminal profiler also says that Rogers also knows things about the murders that only the killer could have known, including descriptions of the exact sequence of the killings of Denise. Brown and um, uh, Nicole Brown, rather, and of Ron Goldman. Fred Goldman remains convinced that OJ butchered his son, saying, and I'm quoting here, the fact of the acquittal at the hands of the jury will never wash away this murder from the hands of OJ Simpson, no matter how many Glenn Rogers pop up on the media radar screen. Of course, the serial killer theory never does explain the trail of blood that led from Brown's home on Bundy all the way to O.J.'s home on Rockingham, not to mention the mountain of evidence that also pointed to O.J. Megan. Trace, thank you. And for that, we turn to our next guest, who played one of the most critical roles in investigating the O.J. Simpson murder trial. Former LAP homicide detective Mark Furman making a huge break in the case after discovering one of the bloody gloves. Mark Furman's with me now. He's also a Fox News contributor. Mark, great to have you today. What do you make of this? Thank you, Megan. Well, it's kind of hard to uh, find a place to start, but I think the, the first place we should uh, really ask ourselves is when are we going to stop falling for the OJ baiting? Uh, and this is really what this is. You have a serial killer that never was recognized as a prolific, organized, uh, or even interesting serial killer, if he was. Uh, he takes detectives out to find bodies that he can't find. Uh, most of his murders are... Uh, women that he met in bars, that uh, he lost his temper, his M.O. is scattered all over the place, he's disorganized, he didn't get the attention. Uh, he grabbed onto this case, and um, he might well have been working in West Los Angeles, so were a couple hundred other thousand people. Uh, but here's the interesting part, Megan. The Discovery Channel, which might in the future be called the Clueless Channel, takes this because somebody is writing a book the brother. They're taking information, hoping they can sell a couple hundred thousand copies of this book before everybody realizes this guy knows nothing and Glenn Rogers knows nothing. And let's not forget this. Glenn Rogers has no appeals left on his death penalty and he is waiting execution. He really has nothing else to do. So we may be dealing with the ramblings of a bored serial killer who's got too much time on his hands in prison. But what of the report that he allegedly knew things about the murder that only the killer could have known, including a detailed description of the exact sequence of the killers? I mean, of the victims. Well, Megan, if you, uh, my book, Murder in Brentwood, I have a whole chapter on exactly how the murder progressed from beginning to end, all the injuries, the blood trail, uh, everything that the scene said, so uh, at, even in, in 1997 to date, all he had to do is pick up the book 
and read it. And uh, I would probably venture to say that he doesn't even have a working uh, knowledge of, of those items in there. And believe me, for 18 years, uh, much of this information has been out in the public sector. So that would be nothing new. Well, speak to the uh, the evidence as it came out in that case that was you know, that pointed to O.J. Simpson as the actual killer, because he seems to be suggesting I did it. And by the way, um, I had this relationship with O.J. Simpson and, and I was supposed to steal Nicole Braun Simpson's twenty thousand dollar earrings. Just just tick off some of the items against O.J. Well, uh, if we're going to if we're going to the play the game, uh, let's say uh, Simpson gave him twenty thousand dollars. This guy's working as a pay, as a painter. Then there should be some way to prove the influx of money, uh, the phone records between the two. Uh, times and places they met. You can connect that up with times and places that O.J. Simpson was or was not. Uh, that's pretty simple to do. Obviously, that was uh, ran through the ringer in 1995 when he started this, and uh, obviously that panned out to be nothing. But then when you look at the crime scene... Uh, but wait, uh, before we look at the crime scene, advocate, before we look at the crime scene, we have to take a quick break. So we'll leave it on. That's a good tease. Mark Berman on the O.J. Simpson crime scene. We'll pick it up with you in two minutes. All right. So Mark Furman is going to tell us why he does not believe and in his, his view, no one should believe that anyone other than O.J. Simpson committed this crime. Megan, when you when you listen to people trying to promote a, a book, we just listened to one about uh, uh, some P.I. that Jason did it absent of any uh, evidence. And here we go again. So you look at this. We have O.J. Simpson that supposedly hired this serial killer to steal two diamond earrings and kill his wife if necessary. Brilliant. How did this serial killer manage to get O.J. Simpson's Bruno Molly shoes, his blood, cut O.J.'s finger, get all the blood from, th from Simpson and two victims in the Bronco, up the driveway, take a glove, we had everybody's blood on it and put it behind Cato's bungalow, bang on Cato's wall, get in the house, quickly take a shower, leave bloody socks at the end of the bed and an empty knife box for a knife that, the, that was the murder weapon uh, in, in the master bath. And then have Simpson not be able to account for how he cut his hand, where he was at the time of the murders. And then the whole thing is, is great as Simpson would sell out anybody on the planet not to be in jail so why wouldn't he come up i hired somebody to steal some right. earrings from my wife and he killed them that that's that's I mean, a big question I mean, I, 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 why wouldn't oj simpson and the dream nation, team have said oh all right we're gonna have to cop to you know larceny because oj did hire this guy to go steal a, a pair of earrings but he didn't murder anybody it was this guy judge it was this guy jury they never offered that theory at trial well, of course, they didn't offer that theory. And, and let's not forget that 1995, Rogers was shooting his mouth off about this then. But also, nobody was paying attention to him when uh, he was saying that he was a serial killer. Uh, he is a non-interesting serial spree killer that nobody really cared about and still doesn't. Now right. somebody's trying to make some money. But as a nation, are we this stupid that we fall for the, these media blitzes and this attraction that, that maybe there's something more interesting yeah. that we can squeeze out of this stale and pathetic and easily seen crime. As you know, people are fascinated by that case. Thank you, Mark. And we also want to thank the Discovery Channel Thanks, for allowing us to use the footage from that special. Uh, the special, My Brother, the Serial Killer, airs tomorrow night, uh, November 21st.